Okay, so in this video, I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the basic website builder sections. Um, there are a lot of sections <laughs> that you can add, so many different types of sections. Um, but there are some, there are a couple that are used for the most part a lot more than the rest of them. And I'm going to show you those so that you have a good idea on how to get started. So uh, when you're editing a page, so let's say we're editing the home page, um, some of the most basic Website builder sections are the following. So if you click add section here, the this one here, text, is a huge one. So we'll start with text, okay? So text, a text section here, allows you to add a snippet of text in this type of format to the page. Now, once you've got the text on the page, if you click on it directly, this allows you to edit it, right? So you can align it a different way. You can make it a large header, a regular header, a small header, a paragraph, which is what it is now. Um, you can insert a link, you can do the media library, add a picture. Um, text sections are great if you want to add a picture because when you click on media library and you choose a picture, so I'm just going to pick a random one, um, you can actually click on the image and then select drag and drop, you know, hold, press and hold on the corner and you'll be able to actually change the size of the image quite easily. So. That's another thing you can do in text sections. Um, you can change the color of the text, highlight the text, click on text color, choose a different color. Um, you can change the background of that text. Uh, I'm just going to pick a random, obviously this is not a great color scheme, but um, yeah, you can do that as well. Change the background of the text itself. Um, you can see you can make it bold, highlight it. So yeah, there's a lot of options here. You can change the size here. Um, of the text as well. When you're inserting a link, for example, if you wanted to um, hyperlink some text, highlight the text and then choose insert link right here. And then you can select the link you want to, um, you want to link to either through the drop down menu here or pasting in the link directly manually right here. So I'm just gonna select a random, like the home page. You can display it as a button or you can uh, have it just be hyperlinked text. And then you can open it in a new window as well if you prefer, um, and that will hyperlink it as well. So lots of different options here. Now, if you, on the left side of the page, if you add a text section, then on the left side, you can actually change more things about the style of the section itself. So this is more changing the text. Here, you can change the style. So if you choose default, it's gonna be white because that's the color, your default color in your theme. So I'm not gonna go over the theme right now, but these three options here under style are pulling from your theme. So you get to choose what color the default is. You get to choose what color the alternate is. Right now it's gray, but you can change that. And then you can also choose custom. So if you wanna give it a background color, um, you could give the text section a background image here. Um, we have an automatic a placeholder image right here that you can change. So if you click on custom background image, you can actually change the background image of the section if you want to give it a different background image. It'll take a minute to load, I guess. Oh, there we go. Um, and, you know, changing the color of the text to white because that's bothering me. <laughs> you know, if you want to do something like this, uh, and then down here, if you were to add a background image, you could change the overlay color to be whatever you want. So if you want the overlay color to be brighter, you can do that. You can make it less transparent, more transparent. Um, if you actually want to, and, and yeah, you would play around with that, right? So if I were to do a lighter background, then obviously this text color, you would highlight it, click on the arrow next to text color, and then choose a darker color for the text, right? So there's lots of options here um, in terms of the background color and the style. Um, now, if you want to give it a background color that's not your default or your alternate colors, you want to have a different color within the section itself. You can actually just, you know, you don't, you can, you can, all you need to do is select custom here first, and then we'll have a placeholder image. So you don't even have to touch the image if you want to, and then just click on custom background overlay color and choose the color that you want the background color to be. So let's say I want it to be this button color. We'll automatically give it zero transparency, which moves this little bar all the way to the right. And you'll see that makes the color of the section be fully this color. If you move this back, it's gonna make it more and more transparent over the image, right? But if you move it all the way to the right, it will be 0% transparent and just a solid block of color. 
Okay, so just remember if you have a different color you want this section to be that's different from default or alternate, you have to choose custom first under appearance. And then the last thing on that is you can choose the width of the section. It could be full, medium, or narrow, and then you could give it some padding, which would add some white space above or below, and below, sorry, above and below the section itself. Okay, and then down here, if you want to add a button to the section, you can totally do that too. Just click button, and then you can add the, the CTA, the width, you can choose how much you want it to be, the sizing, um, minimum width, etc. Um, you can change me small, medium, large, the border radius, okay, if you want a round button, you could change that. Um, you can change the color, text color, give the button a link, and you could make it an outline button if you want or it could be a solid button. Okay, now the, the features that I just went over for this section are a lot of these features you'll see in almost every section. So it's good for me to explain them at least once so you know how that works, right? All right, so that's a text section here. Now, the, the other ones I wanted to go over is a text and media section. We'll do that one next. This one is very similar. Same thing over here, you can add a title for section, right, <laughs> whatever you want it to be. You can select that title, you can make it middle, you can format it, make it large, highlight it, center, you know, I mean, there's so many things. Same thing here, you can edit the text directly on the page. And so the text is on the left and the media is on the right, but on the left side of the page, you'll see, okay, to add an image here, you would click choose media under media, and that will add the image. And then you actually get some customization options, right? So items vertical alignment right now, it's center. But if I were to do top, that would put the text up here. If I were to do bottom, the text would go there, right? Uh, media placement on desktop. So on a desktop browser, how would that look? You could put the image on the left and the text on the right, et cetera, vice versa. In mobile, obviously, this is all going to be squished in, right? So a desktop is wider, but mobile is much smaller. So the media, the image, has to either be above or below the text. And I'll show you what that looks like. Now, you can choose for it to be top or it to be bottom, right? You can choose where the media will show. The way you can test that out is you'll see up here, we've got desktop, tablet, and mobile. So right now, if you click on desktop, you'll see how it looks. Tablet, this is how it would look. And then in mobile, you'll see that the title is here, but then the image and the text go here. And you can choose, okay, I want the image to be on the bottom of the text or the top, right? And then I'm just gonna put it back in full screen. Split ratio, same, very uh, straightforward. You know, if you want it to be half and half, this is what it looks like. If the text is one third, then it's a little bigger. If the text is two thirds and the, or sorry, if the image is one third. If the text is now one third, sorry, two thirds, and the image is one third, woo, got my fractions. <laughs> Let me start over. If the text is one third, I think I was correct on that, and the media is two thirds, this is what it shows. And you can make the text be bigger and the media smaller, et cetera, right? And you can actually choose the maximum media width down here. Uh, the text font size, you get to choose you know, how big you want that to be, but you can also change it right directly in between, you know, in the editor itself by clicking on size. And then same thing, padding. Um, if you wanna link the media somewhere, uh, you can do that by clicking on the media link here and this pasting a link in here or choosing one from the drop down. And then the appearance section here is the same thing as what I shared on the text and same with the content with the button. So that's a text and media section. I want to show you the features section. It's another great one. Um, you'll see that a features section gives you the opportunity to have columns uh, with a certain amount of like an image, a feature title, and a description for each one of these. And they can each go in their own column. And I'll show you how that looks. So actually, right now, I will save these changes and go ahead and show you from the front end. So you can see here, there's no images yet, but this is actually what a feature section is. That's kind of how it can look. And you can choose, I want three columns, five columns, four columns, two columns, you know, it's totally up to you. Um, actually, this is a great example of how this features uh, section looks from the front end. It's actually better because there are images and you can see exactly what you can do with this. So in a feature section, you can choose the number of columns here, uh, the maximum width of each column. You can round the images automatically. Um, and then same thing with the appearance, you can give it a different background color, background image, um, padding. And then down here is where you'll edit each feature, 
right? So you'll see from the front end, each of these is considered a feature. Okay, so you come in here, click feature, and that's the first one. So these are all in the order that they show up on the front end, okay? So this one is would be this one. I'm actually gonna show you from the actual one here. This is the one <laughs> that's already created, but you'll see this one corresponds to this one. And then if you click on the second feature in this, uh, in this column, it corresponds to this one, etc. right? So you'll select a feature and then you'll choose the image. It can link the image if you want to, and then you can open it in a, in a new tab if you do link the image. And that's the things you can do to edit the features themselves. Now to edit the title and the subtitle, you click on it directly and just edit it there. Same thing with each title and subtitle for each feature. Just click on the text directly and you get to edit that. I see a typo. Uh, you get to edit that directly over here. Okay, so that is the feature section. And then the last thing I wanted to show you is a list section. So if we scroll down to, I'm adding a section. So again, when you add a section, click on add section on the left, right? And that will give you the option to add another section. You can also search for sections up here, which is great. So you don't have to dig each time when you're looking for something but they are in alphabetical order and they have different categories. So under lists, that category, you've got three options here that you can choose from to add a list directly to the page, uh, a list sign up, sorry, directly to the page. So a couple options, I'm gonna go through each one. This list sign up form looks like this, okay? If I click add, you'll see I get to change the title um, and then this is what the form can look like. Now you can choose to have the text on the left side of the form, on the right of the form or above it, etc. You can add an image if you want to, and that would show up here, but you get to choose if you want, uh, I believe you get to choose, or maybe you don't. Well, either way, the image would go there. <laughs> I think if it's if the text is beneath, yeah, the image will stay underneath, so. Alrighty, so that's another option there. Um, you can choose to, change the position. Oh, there we go. That's what it is. Sorry. It looks different from the back end here, but you can put the image on the left or the right of the form and you get to choose. Right now it's just underneath because it's a little more squished from the back end. Um, and then you can choose the alignment. I believe this is the alignment of the media, but I'll have to show you from the front end to see it exactly. And then same thing. You can give it a background color, etc. All of that stuff um, that I shared previously. And then this is really important. So this is where you choose the list that they will be subscribe to when they fill out this form. So you select that here, okay? Then you can choose which fields you want to add to the form. So you can make it required by selecting that box. They need to add their name, first name, or if it's a one, that's one field for the full name, or two, which is two fields, one for the first, another field for the second, right? You get to decide how you want that to look. Or if you just want their first name, then you just leave it like that. So you have to ask for their name and their email, That's, or at least their email, you have to ask for that. So we have that information to create a contact record when they subscribe. However, um, you can also add mobile phone, or once you've added custom fields to your field section in your settings, which I'm not gonna go over now, but that's in your overall account settings, all of those custom fields will show up here and you can add them specifically to the form depending on which ones you prefer. The I agree to accept to receive marketing box is an automatic box that will show up on the form if you have your, your account settings set to require GDPR consent, right? So this is, corresponding to your account settings as well. Now the button, you can choose the text you want the button to say right here. Um, if you want it to be full or if you want it to be smaller, like the actual sign up size, um, all of this stuff is pretty straightforward. Just changing this, the design of the button itself. You can also uh, change this little um, message at the bottom, like we hate spam, you know, you can say whatever you want there. Um, and then Let's see here. So I'm just trying to find the relevant stuff. So field labels above the field, or you can have them directly in the field. You see that? So if it's above, the field labels go up, up top. And then this is in desktop layout form horizontally on desktop if there are less than two input fields. So this would make it horizontal if there are less than two of these fields. Only works if text position is set to above form at the top. So the text has to be up here. Okay, so that is the first list sign up form. We're almost done here, I promise. <laughs>
I'm just going to type list. The other two are pretty straightforward. Um, actually, two-step list sign up, I'll explain that last. But the horizontal list sign up is really straightforward. It's almost the exact same thing. Um, you get to choose an image if you want to. You don't have to change the title right here. You'll just see that it's a completely horizontal um, section like this. And the same thing, you choose the list, you choose the fields, and you customize the button. Okay, so it's just another type of form that you could choose if you prefer. And then lastly, this last one's very important because it, it is something that a lot of people ask for. But a lot of times people will want to use a two-step list sign-up form where you can actually um, have them, you know, press a button and a form pops up, right? So that's called the two-step list sign-up form instead of seeing it directly on the page. If you click add and you add this form, you'll see that we have an automatic button. You don't have to use this button. Uh, right now, if, you if they click this button, this form will pop up, but you can connect it to any button on the page and I'll show you how to do that. But first, it will show from the back end what the form will look like once popped up. Now, customers can't see this from the front end, right? So only you get to see this so that you can actually, you know, customize the form. <laughs> so you'll see here, this will open in a model. Modal, uh, we're showing it in line here so you can see what it looks like. So you can change the title um, and you can see what uh, the design looks like. And then on the left side of the page, same thing, choose all of these appearance. Um, you can give it a background color. You can choose, um, this is actually the pop-up button label. So that's this button that we added for you. You don't have to use it. So if you don't want to use it, just make this blank and we'll remove it. And then you can connect this form to a different button that you're already using somewhere on the page, right? Um, same thing here, customize the button design, choose the list, add the fields, etc. Submit button, all of this stuff you can edit. It's really all the same as the others. So, uh, but this one you'll be able to edit, uh, to pop it up when they click on a, a button. And the way that works is let's say I am going to add a section and it, I just want to add a button section right here. I'm just going to add that. And I want that button to be right here <laughs> this is completely random i have no idea where yeah like right here or i want to connect it to this one right i could do both so in this button section that i created i would scroll down to the actual button here and when i'm choosing a link i'm going to click on this little link bar and choose two-step list sign up okay now when i save changes what happens is from the front end you'll see that when i click this button the form pops up right and then they can sign in. Another thing too is it works for buttons that are actually part of another section. They don't have their own section, so this button has its own section. This one is part of another section. If I click on it, I scroll down on the left, click on button, choose the link, select two-step list sign up. I'm selecting the two-step list sign up section, save changes. I'm gonna view the page on site by clicking this button, scroll down to that button, I click, boom, there we go. Okay, so I know this was a lot. Feel free to pause and come back, um, you know, throughout the throughout the video. And if you made it this far, I'm super proud of you. Go ahead and uh, have at it and try out these different sections.